Hey guys, you might be able to tell by the title of this video that Destiny 2 for the PC is finally retail, and so following up on testing I did a couple of months ago with the beta, I decided to take the final retail code, benchmark it again, across 12 GPUs in a multi-GPU configuration as well for good measure, and uh, I expected to be a little bit surprised, maybe Bungie made some optimizations since the beta up till now. And there really isn't any surprises to be had. Uh, cards pretty much scale as much as they did before, except AMD has a little bit of a boost. Uh, Nvidia not so much, which isn't really much of a surprise since they're effectively a game-ready driver when the beta came out. So this time around, when I decided to benchmark uh, the final game, I decided to do it a little bit differently than I did with the beta. So with the beta, uh, all we had access to was a single-player campaign. So I played the first two minutes of the game over and over, and then just recorded that. And I use that with Fraps, which is a really nice tool for getting average uh, minimum frame rates. Uh, Bungie decided to kill that before the game actually, or the beta actually ended, which threw a wrench in some of my testing, but it wasn't too bad, so whatever. So for this time, I had to use PresentMon, which is a tool I'm not hugely familiar with. It's a little bit complicated to use, and it's definitely complicated to interpret the results from. So unfortunately for this article, or and video, I've only been able to include the average frame rate, which is truly unfortunate. I'm going to work on figuring out how to find maybe not the minimums because they're not that important, but at least the 1% averages minimums would be nice. Um, and also for the beta, I, I did the story mission, but with the full game, I have a lot more opportunity to just benchmark anywhere, really. And as you can probably tell by this shirt, I'm actually a fan of the game. So to say I was excited for the launch would be an understatement. Uh, when it came out, I played the game pretty much all day and streamed it. It's on our channel somewhere. So f probably about 10 hours total. To punish myself, I ended up benchmarking the 12 GPUs the following day, which resulted in me doing the same exact Lost Sector on Titan a uh, total of 68 times. Four of those were just for testing purposes, and then the rest were two times each on each GPU and GPU configuration. Now, unfortunately, there is one caveat to benchmarking a Lost Sector, and that's the fact that it's off of the main world, so there's no other players down there, which reduces variance, actually, which is a really good thing, because it's much easier to get a repeated result from doing a lost sector than you would doing a public event, for example, up in the world. Now, the thing is, is when you're up in the world, you have a huge, vast draw distance where you don't have that in lost sector. So you're going to inevitably get lower frames per second when you're up in the outer world than you will in the lost sector. But at the same time, I preferred to benchmark with the Lost Sector just to remove all of those little variances and keep the results as consistent as possible. Now across the 34 times I benchmarked this on, on the individual configurations times two, there's only twice where there was a five frame per second delta and that those both were well over 100 so at that point it doesn't even really matter. So I stuck to the last Lost Sector which means all of these results are a little bit easy on the game. If you see a card here in a configuration gets 70 frames per second, maybe consider it 60 frames per second, worst case, if you're up in the outer world. Fortunately for every single person playing, Destiny 2 is not the most hardcore game out there, and that's despite its beautiful aesthetics. It, it just doesn't require a powerhouse of a PC to play at 60 frames per second, at least. Um, as you'll see in a minute, the results show that it, all you need is a GTX 1050 to play at 1080 by 60. Uh, that would assume maybe reducing some settings, but it's not really that big of a deal. So the way we benchmarked, I started with the highest profile, and that's what I did in the beta, and that was a bad move. Depth of field setting is also on highest, and it's way too hardcore on the GPU. It's not even worth it. You can barely notice the difference in-game going from high to highest, so it should just be avoided, because as I tested in the beta, depth of field on highest and then going to high, it could save you 20 frames per second. It, it's just a ridiculous setting. So that's one thing I change, and then I also move from SMAA to FXAA, as I think it's a, it's a more sane anti-aliasing method. If you can only choose one, I think that's the one you should go for, because there's barely an impact to GPU performance, and it looks pretty good. Now the game used to have an MSAA option, but that was apparently so buggy that Bungie decided to just yank it out. So. Viva la FXAA, I guess. Now, if you run into any problems where these particular settings don't really align with what I have here, or you need to just reduce something because you have an older generation GPU I couldn't test, 
The first thing you probably would want to look at is screen space ambient occlusion. You could move that from 3D AO to uh, HB AO, and that'll improve performance a little bit. But the game has so many different settings. You can probably decrease the environment detail distance slightly, uh, texture quality if you get really desperate. But overall, like I said, you don't need a high-end GPU to get 60 frames per second. And even a GTX 1050 is going to deliver that at 1080p, which is far better than a console is going to give you. All right. I already explained my benchmarking procedures to you, but I thought it might be a good idea to actually show you as well. Just so you can better understand my results, how I do things. So this is me on Titan. This is not where I don't benchmark any of this uh, section. I jump down here to the Lost Sector. And this is after you go to the rig, by the way. And if, this is effectively where I begin. At this point, this is when I Alt-Tab, begin my present Mon script, wait a few seconds for it to kick into gear, and then I run my uh, this Lost Sector. And in case it's not obvious, uh, I try to be as repeatable as possible. I try to do things the exact same way, like a robot would. Because time demos are available in some games, but not all of them. And at the same time, it's nice to have real-world benchmarks as well. So at this point, the boss in this Lost Sector comes around the corner. Throw my grenade down there. I don't have that right now. This run is, t is not exactly verbatim of a benchmarking run. Because it's hard to pay attention and talk at the same time. So I shoot at the boss for a little bit. Get him down to maybe one bar left. I usually pop my uh, healing rift at this time too because I'm dying. But as you can imagine, after running this some 60 times, you can get a little bit familiar with it so you can speed up without even realizing it. And I did encounter that sometimes, so I had to slow myself down subconsciously. But uh, as I said earlier, across the 34 runs times two, there's so very little variation, I totally trust this way of testing because it's just accurate from one to the next. Whereas in the overworld, you might see huge variations or spikes. I didn't encounter a single spike playing through this Lost Sector on either AMD or NVIDIA. Even the low-end cards I didn't have a problem with. So at this point, it's almost done. But I still need to take down the boss. And even still, this may be a little bit quicker than the actual benchmarking runs I do. Because again, it's hard to kind of focus on two things at once. But at this point, I take down the boss, and then I go loot this chest. So after all that preamble, how about we actually get to the results? As I mentioned earlier, 1080p is pretty much a joke for modern mid-range and higher GPUs. All it takes is a GTX 1050 to deliver 60 frames per second at 1080p, as long as you reduce some of the settings down a little bit lower from where we have them as tested. And while I'm focusing an awful lot on 60 frames per second, I do realize that there might be some out there who like 100 hertz goals. And so if you are one of those people with 144 hertz monitors, 100 hertz monitors, whatever, you're not going to need much more than a Vega 56 or a GTX 1070. You will have to lower settings again a little bit lower than what I have them tested at, but it's not going to take much effort to get there. And fortunately, Destiny is a game that will peg to 144 hertz as long as the horsepower is there. For 1440p at 60 frames per second, you don't need anything more than an RX 570 or GTX 1060. Both of those cards by themselves at the tested settings deliver close to 60 frames per second as it is. And if you move up the stack, the Titan XP and also the 1080 Tide deliver pretty much 144 hertz. If you own at least a GTX 1080, 144 hertz might still be possible, but you'll probably have to lower the detail a fair amount. So how about the ultra-wide resolution of 3440 by 1440? For that, all you need is an RX Vega 56 or a GTX 1070. Both cards surpass 60 frames per second at our tested settings, and anything higher just gives you even better performance. If you own a monitor, an ultra-wide monitor at 100 hertz, a GTX 1080 Ti is going to get you there. And if you want to be future-proofed about it, two 1080 Ti's will give you 144 hertz. We just need to wait on the monitors. At 4K, the Vega 56 and GTX 1070 are pretty suitable. You'll still have to lower settings just a little bit to get them nearer 60, but the same thing can be said about the Vega 64 and 10, 1080. This just happens to be a resolution that's extremely hard on GPUs. 
So you're going to have to go really high end to get anything really playable. In this particular case, a 1080 Ti will deliver at least 60 frames per second in any pretty pretty much any part of the game. And a Titan XP is going to improve that a little, barely anything at all. But if you have a 1080 Ti times 2, you'll even get 120 hertz. Again, you'll be waiting on the monitors though. As a quick recap, at 1080p you don't really need more than a GTX 1050 to get 60 frames per second at least. You'll just need to reduce your settings just a little bit from what we tested at, but it's no big deal, you're not really going to lose anything. For 1440p, an RX 570 is going to be more than suitable, as well as a GTX 1080. If you want more than 100Hz there, you're going to need to go with an RX Vega 64 or GTX 1080. For ultra wide, the RX Vega 56 and GTX 1070 are more than enough, but if you want to future proof a little bit or use a 100Hz monitor, you'll need at least a GTX 1080 Ti. For 4K, the situation doesn't change too much. RX Vega 56 or GTX 1070 as the minimum, and if you really want to push beyond 60 frames per second, you'll need at least a GTX 1080 Ti. So hopefully by now you know what GPU you want with Destiny 2 if you're going to be playing, and I hope you do. And if you do, please comment because we'd like to know who out there is playing. Uh, coincidentally, as I went to record this video, a good friend of mine who I played extensively with on PlayStation uh, said he finally gave in and bought the PC version after I and many others wouldn't shut up about how smooth and glorious it is over the console versions. So big shout out to you, Patty Big Rig. I can't wait to play with you. And also the rest of you guys. Thank you for watching.